here's a little explanation for you about what we need to do when we're looking at waveforms and we want to find the phase angle between those. So we've got here a couple of waves and we've got the scale measurements for that oscilloscope reading. So we're just going to start off with having a look at where we actually choose our points. So I'm just going to draw on this picture a little bit. If we choose one nicely in the middle there, where the yellow line goes through the zero for the graph, and it's going in an upward direction, so that can be one of our reference points, which lines up conveniently with the dotted line on there. And there's different places that we could choose another one. If we went over to the left side, we've got the red line going up through the zero point there. There's also another zero crossing point in here, which is pretty close, but it's actually going in the wrong direction. So we can't use that one. So I'll just undo that. So we're using this one that's over on the left, which is about in the middle of there. Let's, before we get into our calculation, just do a bit of a check around, maybe on the right side of where we started from. So the first one here, there's a point in our red line that's going through the zero. It's going in the upward direction. And it's actually really close to the value that we started with in the yellow line. So it's about half of a division across there. So that's what I'd recommend is using this distance, which is nice and close in here. And based on our scale, 500 microseconds per division, that's pretty close to half of a division. So I'll write in here for our delta T, 250 microseconds. And we've got the equation at the top here for converting that delta T into an actual angle in degrees. So the key thing there is have a look around the different parts of your graph. You might find one part of the waveform that's quite far away, and you can use that. Or if you look closely in, in, in the other direction, you could find one that's closer, and it'll end up giving you a smaller angle. Because generally, we want to have an angle that's less than 180 degrees. But we need to know as well about the leading and lagging for these two waveforms. So if we're using our yellow as our reference, we want to say, does the red line lead or lag from the yellow one? And because we've got time flowing from the left to the right, we can just draw that in as well. So the yellow line gets to its zero value. It's increasing here, if we call that our zero point in time. And then on the right side, we've got our red waveform, which gets to zero at a later time. So because that one's getting there at a later time, it's one that we call a lagging waveform. So I'll note that in here as well. Red, lags, yellow. So it's really important with these phase angles and time shifts that you always say which waveform is lagging or leading which other one. If you just say lags by itself, that doesn't really tell us much. So we always have to include the names or the colors or whatever type of description you have for those waveforms. So hopefully that helps you when you're coming to have a look at your waveforms and figuring out what the time difference is and how you're going to convert that into a phase angle.